Okay, we're back here live in Las Vegas for IBM's Information on Demand, exclusive coverage by SiliconANGLE. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. We have two guests here today, Tom Morris Rowe and uh, Janine Grosso. Grosso, Welcome to the yeah, Grosso. Welcome to the Cube. Um, acquisition, IBM, you guys closed the, uh, your, your company, the Now Factory, um, just recently. Hmm. Um, big deal, social, service providers, Mobile, we didn't talk much about mobile. We talked about big data analytics yesterday and all the insights. Mm -hmm. Today it's kind of social business, but we've been commenting mm -hmm. about what's under the hood, cloud and mobile's obviously one of them. Tom, how did, how did you guys get to the point where you guys were acquired by, by IBM? Because you, you're in the mobile area mainly, mm -hmm. specialized, and that's a hot area. Yeah. Consumerization well, of to, IT. Yeah, just a little bit about what, what it is we do first. So um, I guess we're, we're experts in um, understanding users experience on uh, when they use their mobile devices on the services. So we're able to understand the, the ones and zeros flowing up and down the wire and translate that into a customer's experience and, and we get insights on those customers. And that information then we can use across the, uh, the business, the mobile business, in the, the marketing side of the house, in the technical side of the house, and in the care side of the house. So you're, uh, you're an entrepreneur, You've been found, you found the company in uh, 2007. Yeah. Um, share it with folks, what was the breakout moment for you guys? I mean, what product, what market trend really uh, catapulted your offering? Well, we started, uh, I guess, uh, you know, you don't have to go back very far uh, in uh, telecoms when, you know, mobile data wasn't very sophisticated. Back in 2006, 2007, you had, uh, if you remember, GPRS, and all you could get, if you were lucky, was the weather, and uh, it came in text form, you know. <laughs> uh, you know, it was uh, before any of these smartphones. You're dating uh, me there. It seems an, a long, long time ago. So back then, uh, we started working with mobile operators that had no visibility at all, even if it was working or not working. So it was well, a very the early iPhone days. came out, and you know, BlackBerry was out there, but the iPhone really kind of lifted it was everyone yeah, yeah. up, saying, "Wow!" Yeah, that's when everything changed. Smart, yeah. you know, the brown when, smartphone. Yeah. At that time, people were still wondering, you know, was was you know, was there enough value in this in this mobile data? So we started in the early days uh, uh, helping operators understand whether the the, this service was working or not. Then with the introductions of the smartphone and the explosion of uh, new applications and services, we, we got into the whole area of, of looking deeper into that, understanding what the experience of the customers were, what, they're, what, they're, what they're, uh, whether the service was working or not from a, from a technology perspective, and, uh, and also working with, the custom, uh, with our customers, which was the mobile operators to understand, you know, what better services they can provide. So talk about the big data angle here, because obviously, you know, we, we you know, on the other side of the house, in, in large enterprises, big data is in mm -hmm. in the data center. People are using data to measure all kinds of activity within the data center, the physical plant, if you will, of, of a company. But you know, service providers, they have <laughs> their customers. They have to be aggressive with big data. I mean, they have all kinds of uh, revenue driving concerns. Hey, what's preference of my customer to operational efficiencies. Can you go a little bit into detail on some of the things that they do? You mm. guys, can you talk about this? Well, well, maybe I'll start with why, right? So obviously big data and analytics is, you know, one of our four strategic um, focus items at the, at the corporate level, right? So again, who, who more than a telco has a big data problem, right? With just an explosion of data, how do they capitalize on it? How do they monetize it? How do they find ways to get savings within the organization? So we took, a, we took a deep look into telco to say, where would it make sense to invest that would really complement what we already offer um, with big data and our analytics portfolio? Um, and it, it, it kind of came to us, the Now Factory came to us through a client who um, got exposed to their technology and it, you know, we just had, our vision was so aligned that it just made sense to obviously kind of take that next step and... Uh, take them off the market. And take put them off the market, right marry them, and yeah. you know. 
choir. So what is the driver? Obviously, talk about some of the dynamics, because you you've you been involved in M&A and, and business development. The service provider market, obviously relevant. In the old mm -hmm. days was subscribers, subscriber growth. Mm -hmm. That's it. Now, welcome to the internet. With the iPhones and the smartphones, you have revenue threats from other sources, yep. so the competitive nature at the edge, to growth, just physical growth on the operations side. What, was, what do you guys look at in IBM? What's your, what's your solution? What do you guys sell to the providers these guys, and what are their top concerns? Um, well, I think all of the concerns that you, you named, basically, right, it's how can they differentiate themselves from their competitors, right? And how can they keep subscribers? How can they um, keep their clients happy? Because if they keep their clients happy and limit the number of calls that they're going to, let's say, put in because of quality issues, then obviously they'll be able to retain them. Um, so the subscriber experience, I think, is key. You know, definitely one of the, you know, kind of big angles that the CSPs are trying to do because of the competitive nature of this business. So I think uh, to, to, to fill out on that, there, so the, there is the, the normal business, uh, and that's in terms of their current business, which is the, uh, the money they're making from their subscribers and the services they're providing currently. And they need to optimize those businesses. And in most, uh, in, in most of the world, and in, especially in the developed world, that's, there's a lot of focus in that area. So how do you deliver those services at, uh, at, at more and more efficiently? But then at the same time, they need to look to the future and they say, well, you know, uh, you know how do we fit into the new ecosystem? And uh, we would work with uh, service providers in giving them better insights as to how that has changed in over time. What use cases did you, did you see most that you bumped into with these guys? Mm -hmm. Well, this, the, the, I, I guess there's a number of different ways they're trying to generate new revenue. So, and and to, be, to be honest, and some of these are, are very early stage yet. Um, there's some other stuff that they're, they would try to do in terms of, of providing alternatives to, say, uh, um, if I look at, say, WhatsApp, for example, which is a free text type message. Uh, I mean, they would look at the kind of usage of that within their subscriber base, look at which kind of tariff groups would be p taking that up and which wouldn't be, and maybe competing against that by offering more free text to those type of tariff groups. So they, you know, so they can, with the, inf with the right information, uh, optimize their, their business models so that they can compete more effectively uh, with some of these new social medias and new changes in, in things. They're, they're also at the same time, as I yeah, said. there's cannibalization to their revenue, right? That that's some ca mm -hmm. cannibalization, but there's also new opportunities for them and new revenue streams, which uh, many of them are looking at as well. So you talk about the, the service providers that you talk to uh, in, in the acquisition. You did the due diligence. You did the purchase, then you got to do the integration. Mm -hmm. Just take us through what was that like? I mean, uh, and the strategy. Uh, and do people get brought in? Is it full integration? Do they get to work autonomously? Do they get brought into the fold immediately? What's the strategy? How do you guys do your integrations? Well, there's there's no one acquisition alike, so <laughs> they're they're all very different. Um, in this case, it's not um, a playbook. Like EMC has a specific playbook. They're like, okay, we'll bring them in, we'll let them run it for a while and see how yeah. they do. Give them some <laughs> rope and see if they hang themselves. And some do it on case by case. You're saying yeah, you guys I mean, do case I, by case. I mean, we do we we do have some area like back office is very structured, right? So we obviously fold accounting, finance, legal you know, contracts, all of that does get folded into kind of the, yeah. the, the broader IBM. Um, in the case of how we go to market, um, the offerings that we create, um, in some cases, to your, your earlier point, you know, it could be a tuck and fold where maybe you're just acquiring the technology. Um, in this case, we, yes, we have um, an industry team that focuses on telco and selling to the CSPs in an overall platform view. But w what really drew us to the Now Factory was, um, you know, their industry expertise, the fact that the products that they are actually offering to their clients are s is software versus a, a highly customized um, set of services, right? And therefore, so the software was a synergy aspect. It, absolutely. I mean, th with software you can scale, right? So obviously, software was a big drive. Um, the fact that they had um, a fully integrated stack, that's what clients want. They don't want to buy capabilities. They want to um, they want to buy value and by use case. And so that too, I think, was a big uh, differentiator from the Now Factory and, and, other, and other vendors in this space. 
Tom, how was the how was the process for you? Was it painful? <laughs> <laughs> it, it was. Have you slept for the say, last six months? Yeah, it, it, what you just can slept I say? The back <laughs> office what integration. I, I mean, that's, IBM's got some serious machinery back there. They I mean, sure have. I mean, I mean a they, lot of uh, leverage. It's great, great mm. foundation. I think they, they have a great machine. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's big. <laughs> it's a monster. Uh, and we, we tried uh, to keep it small. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, the outcome, you asked what the outcome was. I mean, the outcome is, I mean, we still, as the Now Factory, an IBM company, I mean, we, we still have revenue targets to, to make and margin targets to make. So things haven't changed that much now. We have a much uh, bigger uh, support, obviously, and reach uh, into customers than we had before. Yeah, and then we also have the um, added benefit now of being able to use uh, technology which has been developed uh, by IBM uh, over many years, which is very scalable, uh, which gives us, which means we can, f instead of building that, we can focus on the differentiating stuff, uh, which makes di real difference to, to the clients. In yeah, the so use we cases. can give them more resources. We can give them the, the depth and the breadth yeah. that they, that it's hard to do you for you a standalone them, you company. You take them to a great big plantation called The World Absolutely. of IBM, which Absolutely. is huge. Reach and customer and, and it can be overkill, by the way. It, go, yeah. it works both <laughs> ways. It cuts both ways. Yeah. Well, that's the balance of the M&A, and you brought up that the interesting, I always kind of joke about the back office, but you know, IBM does some good acquisitions, but the, the key is the leverage, right? So, like, yeah, the, leverage. You know, uh, the interesting thing yeah. people worry about the acquisitions is, mm -hmm. you know, the founders come in, they get integrated into culture that's not theirs, they feel handcuffed, and, and so that's always a concern mm -hmm. for, mm -hmm. for founders. I mean, mm -hmm. how do you feel about the acquisition? You guys giving them enough room to, to be creative, but yet all that leverage? Is that, is that the philosophy so far? That, that's how I see, yeah, that's what I've seen so far. I mean, um, one of the things that I feel was culturally, I, I think the, it wasn't as different as what I might, may Can have thought. Can you still drink Guinness yeah, in yeah, the they, office? Yeah, they, they seem to be okay. <laughs> 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 no, I'm enjoying work with them. <laughs> so uh, it hasn't, uh, hasn't been a huge, it hasn't been a huge change. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that was one of the things that for a small company, they had such a defined culture and a set of practices that they followed, and it's just so rare that you actually see that in a in a small company. Janine, so what's next for you? The integration is done. Now what do you do? Do you move well, to your next deal, or you stay with them for I a little bit? I am actually staying with them. So the integration okay. is not done. So we closed last week. Close the deal. Yes, that means but okay. so we'll have the More next eight months, and we'll we'll okay. obviously incorporate what we believe we should, right, and integrate again back office, and then obviously continue to help them build out their offerings and you know so even you see it through you're like project managing the kind of the, the, the keeping the ball moving yeah yeah so I will stay on it for at least a year if Great. not two and um, you know ensure that again the now factory preserve um, what we what we obviously bought from a technology perspective but also right. integrate it with other big data products and that was the other, the other great thing about them um, some companies you know there has there's a lot of kind of rewrite that has to be done, but the technology was so um, compatible with our big data platform already, um, so there's going to be a lot of natural synergies with Which that. Which piece so of the big data platform was it most uh, uh, synergistic with in your mind? I mean, it's, it's a pretty big yes. platform. Yes. Well, actually, I mean, if you think about the core, you have Netiza, right, mm -hmm. or uh, Pure Data for Analytics, um, and so there's, there's a lot of great things that we think we're going to do there. And then Streams, which is a uh, Infosphere Streams, which is a product that actually was built um, within IBM over the last uh, five, ten years. Um, there's great opportunity there to, to, to take that technology, which really does mediation for telcos, and incorporate it into their offering. Yeah, Streams is really relevant. I mean, the tease is track record speaks for itself, but you look mm. at real time, you bring in streaming, these kinds of tech, it's pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a, there's great opportunities there. I mean, a lot of uh, the value add in this area is, is being able to close the loop. So where you, where, you see an, where you see an offer you can make to somebody or um, to be able to do that in real time, uh, to give to, I guess it's the, the now part of the now factory and, and to be able to, to make it real. So if, if you're walking past a, a shop which is an offer which you're interested in to be able to get a trigger straight away. So there's a lot of great stuff, I think, mm. that we'll be able to do with streams going forward. So i got to ask you, um, as, a star, as an entrepreneur, uh, two questions. One, how does it feel to get, were you nervous to sell? I mean, was it like match made in well, heaven? I mean, IBM <laughs> is a big machine, it's yeah, a big yeah. battleship or aircraft carrier. I'd have to carrier, say, I have to say from, from my perspective, you know, I, I wasn't looking to sell. It wasn't something that uh, I was I doing. We them. set it up yeah. and, you, you know, we were looking them. around. <laughs> So it, it wasn't, uh, I guess there is a lot of consolidation in the space we're in at the moment. Um, so it, it, it wasn't something we were looking to do. 
if it was a different company uh, that approached us, I don't think we would have went down the same. I think there's, mm -hmm. w when I look at IBM and how it fits with where we wanted to go, it was an obvious fit. So um, I mean, their, their strategy in, in big data and insights and stuff like that fits it's, it's very close to yeah. I mean, so It's like I said, it's opportunity. Yeah. So the next question, that, that good segue to my next question. So startups are hungry. You know, Steve Jobs said stay hungry, and you're always bootstrapping. Even if 170 yeah. people, you're still, yeah. you know, fearful of, oh my God, I could run out of money, even though you're probably loaded. It's like, okay, always, always bootstrapping. You get to IBM, it's like, oh my God, they have all these resources. Do you feel like, uh, mm. you feel... No, I'm just learning oh, how to are bootstrap. You, are now. you eating more? Are you going to the cafeteria? <laughs> you know, we're hoping that he's still going to no, be no, as no. cheap more as he appetite. was. Are when you he was guys hungry? What's your, I mean, what's your mindset now that you're in IBM? I mean, because you now have so much more at your disposal. It's, a, yeah. it's, a, it's an oasis, right? I, I think it's yeah. I, I think there's great opportunities in terms of what we can we can invest in things now, which we know would make a difference in the market that before we couldn't do. Resource wise, yeah. The Resource the wise. So we were always uh, constrained by we would see opportunity, and the, in the area we're working, there's loads of opportunities. There's no shortage of opportunities, but often you just don't. We didn't have the resources to go after those opportunities. Now I think uh, with the resources <laughs> we have, uh, it's very exciting. Yeah. To be there. The, the one thing actually that they had did differently that we observed is they really built their company around their technology. So they built they built use cases out and then built a sales team around that. It doesn't always work that way. So it's really kind of the perfect formula for us to come in, give them the scale, give them the sales resources, the channel to to really drive that value to the client. Jean, Jean how about the growth, mobile growth? Obviously, it's, it's, ma it's massive. You got the, mm -hmm. the entrepreneurs now, their eyes get bigger because they got bigger opportunities. I mean, part of your job is to kind of keep them reined in a little bit, not overdrive, uh, redline their Absolutely. engine, right? So yeah. you got to say, hey, we could, if, we could, if we can clone these guys, mobile mm -hmm. is, is growing so fast. What mm -hmm. are some of the numbers? Or can you share any anecdotal data around the mobile growth? I mean, all? the market, you know, if you look at kind of the segments, and they, they cross a few different segments, but the market's growing at at least 15% within the, you know, customer care, you know, per analyst Mason. So I think there's tremendous growth. Clearly, we're going to take more than 15%, you know, if, if, if all of the opportunities that we're seeing today um, you know, come to fruition. So I, I think, I think There's it's... There's still growth and churn, too. More Android yeah. devices are coming on board. You have, obviously, iPhones crushing it. You have you know, tablets. It's, it's funny because, you know, having just got into this space over the last, you know, six to nine months, um, it's very dynamic, the, the, the telco industries. It's, um, it's almost antiquated, but also very advanced. It's, it's, it's kind of, it's all over the place. And so that, I think, is, is going to hopefully just you know, take us places because of the value that we're going to be able to drive. What's your forecast for the, for the, for the future in terms of, not, not IBM, but from your perspective, mm -hmm. getting in this deal, getting in uh, with the entrepreneurs who, are, who have been laying down great foundation, knowing what you know at IBM, what's the outlook for telcos in your mind? What's the big sweeping change that that's most folks don't see out there that you might be able to, to share with them? So, I, I mean, from a from an underlying perspective, what you know, the, the vision I think that even they have for themselves is to kind of get out of the siloed business, right, where they have kind of all of the different network assets and um, that they have to kind of pull together to actually get some sort of overarching view of the the organization. Um, so, I think you know, being able to really sell them a platform across the, their entire uh, enterprise to give them the insights that they're going to need to better manage their business. Tom, I'll give you the final word. We've got run a break, break here coming up uh, for, for the folks up there. Just share with them you know, what, what to expect from you guys. Maybe talk to your, your customers, your future customers. Share with them kind of what's going to go on for you guys and your team inside IBM. What's your, what's your objective? What are you, you going to do? Well, first, uh, I mean, we've uh, 40 customers around, all around the world in Europe, uh, U.S., and Asia. Um, the first thing is, I mean, there isn't going to be a huge amount of change in terms of the value we deliver them. Um, the one thing I can say is that uh, in IBM now, we'll be able to, ex I mean, one of the reasons our customers work with us is because uh, we're innovative and uh, we move very, very fast with the industry. I think now, uh, given the capability ha we have with the, in IBM, we're able to even move faster with uh, new propositions uh, to our customers and to our new customers. Uh, so I think within it's a very exciting time both for our customers and us uh, at the moment. And the feedback we got from our customers has been very, very positive uh, so far. Well, congratulations on the acquisition. Thank um, you. 
It, the ink is signed. It's closed. Money's transferred. All that stuff's happened. Now the, <laughs> now the hard work begins. That's absolutely right. The, the hard work begins. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, for the folks that know how, what goes on, it's really a lot of work. And you got to get it right. It's like a secret. It's like a recipe to a, you know, it's nice sauce. You want to make mm -hmm. sure all the ingredients are in place for scale. Uh, mm -hmm. Obviously a hot market. Congratulations. So we're here live inside the Cube. Exclusive coverage at uh, IBM's Information on Business and Cube. We're right back.